Um, Jimmy, we'll kick off with you. What did you make of Next Destination's performance in general, and, and do you think he can put it up to Sam Crow? Uh, I was impressed again by Next Destination. I was, I was impressed with him at Navin, and I was impressed with him this time. Um, he didn't beat um, the horse that he beat at Navin um, as far as he had on this occasion, but I think he was just idling in front on, on this occasion. And he jumped, I thought, a bit better as well than he had at Navin, travelled well. Um, I still would prefer Sam Crow to him. Sam Crow looks to have uh, more basic speed for the Ballymore than Next Destination does. If it was softish ground, then I, I think the tables could be turned. But at the moment, I'd, I'd rather stick with the favourite. OK. Um, and Binners, how do you now bet on uh, the winner for the Ballymore? Well, we're seven from eight, Maddie. Um, good afternoon, listeners and Maddie. Um, yeah, it's seven from eight, and we pushed him right out for the Albert Bartlett, Maddie. OK, that's obviously indicative of, of the target that they're going to choose. Um, hi, Justin. What did you make of Next Destination and, and the whole Sam Crow Cheltenham picture in general? Uh, hi, Maddie. I think the Sam Crow picture is uh, probably a little less uh, cast in stone than many might think. I think there's every chance he might drop back to two miles for the Supreme Novice. I think he'd be well able to to do that. I think he's got more. He's got plenty of gears for two miles. And um, I think it was after his first run that Gordon thought that he might be better suited by two and a half miles because he was jumping. His jumping was a little bit, well, wasn't careful, but was a little bit big, but he was a lot slicker the last day. And I think dropping back to two miles or at least two and a quarter at Leopardstown next month is uh, is certainly feasible. Uh, I think Gordon was also saying there's also the chance that he might run this Saturday at Punchestown in the Moscow Flyers. So it'll be interesting to see if he's entered for that. As for next destination, I think the Ballymore is the perfect race for him. I wouldn't like to see him step up to three miles. I don't like the Albert Bartlett. I think it's a race to can bottom out young horses. And I don't think they'll do that with him. Uh, but you know, he's a good, he's a good, he's a good solid horse. He won in adverse circumstance yesterday. He was in front way too soon, and um, as well as that, he did idle a bit in front and cracking smart got a bit closer to him than he was probably entitled to. But there, I don't think there's any certainty the next destination is going to be Willie's first string for uh, for the Ballymore. He's got Getaboard as well, who was very impressive when winning his maiden hurdle at Punchestown last month. Where we're still yet to see yet to see anything like the best of him over hurdles. I would suggest. You know, there's still a lot of. Uh, there's still, there's still a, a, lot, a long time to go. There's still a lot of work to be done before we get to March and uh, anything could happen yet. But next destination looks the most, the most solid as regards the Ballymore horse that we've seen so far. But, you know, a lot can change. Yeah, OK. Um, I just want to touch on Cracking Smart. Of course, he finished second um, the last time. And again, as Jimmy said, he was a bit closer to the winner this time out. He's wearing cheap pieces for the first time. Do you reckon he's the sort of horse that could thrive in an Albert Bartlett? I think he's now 7-1 to one favourite for that race. Maybe Binners can confirm, Justin? <laughs> Yeah, de yeah, definitely. He's uh, he's he, he is he's an absolute three miler, and uh, I would uh, yeah, that's that's definitely the race for him. I would suggest. Okay, Binners, is that correct? Yes, Maddie, seven and one favourite. Next destination eight, who we think probably won't run, and then it's nine to one on the blind side, sixteen to one bar. Okay, and and just to confirm, if Sam Crow was to go for the Supreme, have you got him priced up for that race? Sorry to be a pain. Ah, uh, uh, no problem at all. Yeah, one. Second, please call her. <laughs> no uh, <worries>. Sam, <laughs> Sam Crow, uh, for the, you can have 16 to 1 for the two miler, uh, Maddie. Blimey, so I think Gosh. Justin might be getting stuck into that. Yeah, jump onto that, Justin. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. A lot of people were talking Sam Crow up to be their sort of Cheltenham banker. Jimmy, is he, is he your Cheltenham banker material or have you got something else in mind for that? Uh, yeah, he wouldn't be my absolute banker. My absolute banker's footpad. Uh, for the Racing Post Arkle. Um, that is, of course, providing he does go for the Arkle because mm. they've also got Scare Royal and he could go for the JLT. I'd be absolutely horrified if he went for the JLT. I think he's just a spanking good bet for the Arkle. He jumps so well. I think he's, he's one, of the, one of the best uh, novice jumpers of offence I've seen for quite a long time. I just think he's so fluent. Um, and I've always thought he's a horse with a lot of, a lot of speed. Uh, I know some people think he's a stayer, but I think he's always been a speed horse. And they've run him and Scare all in the same race at the Cheltenham Festival for the last two seasons. I'll be hopeful that they do the same again. OK, and Justin, whether Sam Crow, whichever race he goes for, would he be your idea of a banker or are you wanting to keep your powder dry at this stage? I think the powder is 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 uh, the powder won't be getting wet for a while. I'd say, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'd agree with I'd agree with Jimmy. I think Footpad is close to a banker, but for me, if if presenting Percy turns up in the four mile chase, he's an absolute marvel as far as I'm concerned. He'd be he'd certainly be he'd be my banker material at the moment. Okay, and Binners, anything to add? Sam Crow isn't my banker at this stage. I'm still a big 
Willoughby Court fan in the JLT novices chase. I'm blaming the heavy ground at Cheltenham. Um, he also gave Yanworth that mm. five pound that day. He's a course and distance winner in the Ballymore novices hurdle, and he'll do for me. Yeah, I'm a big Willoughby Court fan, so I'll agree with you on that one. Moving on to We Have a Dream on Saturday. Another one for Nicky Henderson, who could well go to the Triumph, of course. Um, do we think he's got that race sewn up? Of course, he has Apple Shakira, who's around the 4-1 to favourite. She's due to run on Trials Day. Binners, go over to you first. How do we bet on the Triumph hurdle? And what did you make of We Have a Dream? Well, according to the betting, he has got it sewn up, Maddie. Um, Apple Shakira, 7-2 favourite. We have a dream. We, um, we nicked that one in seven from eight. He, very impressive at Chepstow. 15 to two, the Irish Hope Espoir Dallin. And then it's 12 bar. Um, I, I had a look at the statistics earlier for this race in the betting, Maddie. Um, I see the last three favourites of one, so you'd have to be keen on Apple Shakira if you follow that statistic. But then in 52 runnings of the race, only 11 favourites of have justified their position. So at 20%, 7 or 2 Apple Shakira, is, is she a little bit too short? I'll ask the expert. Mm, yeah, quite an interesting stat, that. Um, Jimmy Apple Shakira, obviously the others have, have got to give her weight, her being a filly. Mm -hmm. um, Aspoardella and Stormy Island, anything else from Ireland taking your fancy, or do you think she's she's the one? Well, I think um, you've got to respect Ireland's record in the last two years of this race. They had the first four home uh, two years ago when Ivanovich Gorbatov won. And you take out the winner, Defi de Sir, uh, last season, and they would have had the four, first four home again. Mm. So they, they have had a good record recently. But, I mean, Nicky Henderson, of course, had the first three, Peace and Co, Top Notch and Hargammer mm. a few seasons back. He's got back. an excellent record. He's got an excellent record all round. Um, and I have to say, I think both his horses, we have a dream, and, and Apple Shakira, it's not absolutely guaranteed they'll both turn up in, in the triumph, mm. but um, uh, I think they've got excellent chances. I thought that was a very good race, actually, on Saturday, the, the finale. Um, okay. I think the form's very good. I mean, the second horse, Sussex Ranger, had won his previous start by 14 lengths. The third horse had um, won his previous start by 25. Famous Millie probably would have finished fourth if she mm. hadn't fallen at the last. She won by 70 lengths of entry. So uh, for me, I know it was run on very heavy ground, but I think in terms of form, that's as, as good as you're likely to get come March. Okay, that's interesting. Um, Justin, I'd like to go to you um, and see what you think of those Irish hopes I mentioned, Asp Espoir Dallin and, and Stormy Island as well. It's probably worth mentioning a lot of people like to wait until the Adonis has been. Um, just to see if anything comes out of the woodwork. But, of course, Sarkandar in 2011, he was the last horse to do that double. So what do you make of, of Ireland's hopes? As Jimmy said, they often do really well in the Triumph. Yeah, pretty good, I would say. Um, Espar Dallin has obviously done nothing wrong in winning three out of three. Uh, I personally would have question... My question mark was whether is whether Espar Dallin will, uh, will frank the form with Farclad when they meet next. Farclad was second to him at Leopardstown having his first run over hurdles in the in the grade two at Christmas. Um, a bit a bit along the lines of, of, of Tiger Roll, who was second in a group in a graded race. First time out for Elliot when the year he won the uh, the year mm. he won the triumph. Um, I think Farclough could well turn the tables. Stormy Ireland could be absolutely anything. Won yeah. at, won at uh, Ferry House by about 50 lengths. Yeah. Jumped brilliantly and uh, whether he could tow them along like that in a triumph hurdle is, an, is, is another matter. Mm. Um, but I mean, we have a dream looks look solid. The one thing I know about that farm is that uh, Gavin Cromwell's filly went from absolutely running away three out to being beaten in two strides. So I wouldn't be surprised if something was amiss with her, especially on ground that she would have favoured. Mm. But um, I, I was actually going to ask how good the farm that was. I, I, I would have known much about Sussex Ranger before uh, before uh, what Jimmy just said now. So that sounds reasonably good. But I suppose there has to be a fair chance that Henderson will split, them, split the two of them up, won't he? Run one in the Supreme and maybe one in the Triumph. Mm. Justin, yeah. sorry, uh, I, 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 was, I was just going to say, um, the uh, four-year-olds um, in Ireland, the juveniles in Ireland over the last few seasons have, have performed very well at Cheltenham. They appear to be pretty top-notch. How would you compare mm. this season's juveniles to those of last and the season before? Well, this, the thing is, the last the last year and the season before, I wouldn't have thought they were up to finishing one, two, three, four in the Triumph. Mm. You know, it's it really, it's, 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 it's very hard to say. I think this, from what we've seen on, 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 on evidence at the moment, I'd say this year's crop are probably as good as the last couple of years, but it's 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 obviously pretty difficult to say. I think there's there's like the, like the, like the analysis. There's a lot of water to go into the, under the bridge yet, and it's it's far from certain that Espoir Dallon will be the first uh, will be the main Irish Open the Triumph in a couple of months' time. Okay, and Binners, what do you make of the Triumph hurdle at this stage? 
Um, well, as we've already said, uh, Nicky Henderson's got the market cornered. Uh, Gavin Cromwell proved the other day that he can launch overseas raids over here, winning the Welsh National. Um, Espire Dallin's looked really good so far, so maybe that's their main challenger. But uh, looking at those statistics, I, I'm not sure if, if I want to be back in one at two shorter odds at this stage, Maddie. OK, so Binners is hoping something does indeed crawl out the woodwork. Subscribe to Members Club Ultimate and access unlimited video replays from all 86 racecourses in Britain and Ireland.